So I'll go to 2D milling and I'm going to use adaptive clearing to clear out this part. Adaptive clearing allows us to use uh, as much of the tool as we can without fully engaging the tool at all times. So we're using that same tool. We'll move on to the next where it says model. We can select our model and we want to select the bottom edge of this part. So we want this bottom face to be selected. And that contour here is how it knows where the top and bottom of the part is. For the height, where it says bottom from contour, that's good. And then we don't want it to actually cut from the stock top because we already cut that off. We want to cut from the model top. And then the same with the retract height, we can do model top, and then this will follow suit. And that moves everything down because we should have taken off that 0.1 material already. Move to the next tab. For our adaptive clearing, again, our optimal load is how much of the tool is engaged. We have a quarter inch tool, so I'm actually gonna lower this amount to 0.05. That means that 0.05 of the diameter of the tool is gonna be engaged. We do not want both ways because it'll rub against the tool. And then it's asking for a cutting radius. So if we have a really tight corner, we're gonna leave it at the standard. We do have a tight corner inside of here. So this will actually look like a fillet and it won't be sharp like that. We need to do multiple depths. And again, let's do the same depth that we did last time, which was 0.05. And we can use even step downs to make sure each one is about 0.05. Stick to climb. And we're going to uncheck stock to leave. Normally, you'd want to do a finishing pass around this entire part just to clean it up. But we're going to uncheck that for now. On our linking tab, we'll go to stay down most. This will take a little bit longer to process but when we go to cut it's going to try to keep the tool engaged as much as possible without trying to move from side to side let's leave our lead ins and our ramps and see if we like that a helix ramp is going to corkscrew down into the part um, the height of the corkscrew is 0.1 that's actually really high so let's change that to 0.05 okay and then our helical ramp diameter has to be more than half the tool as well. We could select an entry position, but we're not going to. Uh, let's see what the standard options give us. Hit the check. It'll take a second to update. And let's look at what happened. It's actually trying to cut out that bottom based on the way I selected that face. So we can go back, edit our part, go to our stock contours. Uh, for our stock contours, we should have probably selected each edge. So will just go back, and if you select that edge, it should try to pick up that whole entire piece. I accidentally had machine cavities uh, clicked, so it took a little while to uh, figure out which one was which, but make sure that you uncheck that. If you look now, we're uh, able to mill out this entire part here. So that builds all my paths. You see how this is gonna take quite a long time to take away all this material. We can come in a little harder now. So let's go back to our adaptive path. Again, if you notice when I selected that contour, I need to turn off machine cavities. Let's go down and we're actually gonna cut now for multiple depths. Since we have a one inch long cutter, I'm gonna do all that in one pass. We're gonna use the entire side of the end mill to cut. And this should be just fine on the end mill. So I'm gonna check that. And then we can come in and cut this whole part in one pass, just like that. And that should be enough to we make this side of this part we'll still need to flip the part over and cut away the rest of the other material but for now you have the ability to 
do a facing pass and do a clear to get all the material out and leave what's left of your stock. Don't forget to save where you're at. From here, we need to create a program that the machine can read. We know that when we simulate, our part is working uh, just how we want it to. We can see the flutes are engaged in the material. And if we want to show our stack, we can see our stack is being removed. If you'd like to speed it up. You can see all of the stack being removed appropriately using the adaptive clearing tool. That gets us our full shape. Once we like our job, we need to post-process this. We don't have a, a machine to use, so let's click post-process. I'm sorry, before you do that, make sure you click the job. You want the face and the adaptive. If you just click adaptive, it's only gonna post-process that. So click job. And then we'll click post process. It's looking for posts in this folder. If you don't have them, you can look in HSM works and the HSM posts from Autodesk. We're using a CNC router parts mill. And if you click that, it gives you the actual post processor. This is all of the code that makes sure it takes your job and makes it readable by this machine. So you can download that and it's a CPS file and we'll just hit save. You can save it in this location or somewhere else on your computer. And notice how there's already quite a few. Otherwise, if you want to pull up an individual one that you've saved, you can go back to SolidWorks. and hit this button here and just look for the one that you've saved. And then drop down, there's my CNC router part. When it asks to output the file, it's actually gonna give you something uh, to save it as, so you can change this as you go. It's inputted our name here and it's using the units from our project. The last thing we can do is mess around with some of the things in the post processor. This is controls the machine itself. If you want to change the feed rate or um, the tolerance, you can, you can do all kinds of stuff here. Uh, we won't mess with that. We'll just hit post and then it asks us where to save. I'm going to save that on the desktop and that should save as a tap file. Once you save your part, it should open this up and give you a ton of G-code. The G-code looks fairly complicated, but it's mostly just X and Y positions at this point, and then Z positions. <laughs> Since we did a complicated adaptive path, it makes it look like this program is really long, uh, but really it's just automating a lot of those geometries for us and those curves. Right now we're using some machine specific coordinates and then we're selecting uh, g20 which is in inches m5 is making sure that the spindle is off and then we're using tool one which is what we selected in hsm our spindle speed is 12,000, and then we're going to turn on that spindle we're using g54 which was that work offset that's the center of our part and then M7 is our mist coolant. And we're gonna start moving towards our part and then we'll start cutting. There's our 0.2 clearance height. And then we'll G1, we'll move into our position here and then we'll start cutting. Okay, we'll go into a little more depth about the G-code itself, but this should be a good start.